A couple months ago, I made a video about a GMRS user who had petitioned the FCC to add low band frequencies, low band VHF, somewhere between the 30 and 50 megahertz range. Low band frequencies to the GMRS spectrum for a new band and new set of frequencies for GMRS users. This same individual has written another petition to the FCC where he indicates that he is against repeater linking of GMRS repeaters. Check this out. Now, admittedly, admittedly, he sent me, so Mr. Michael Trejos, he saw my first video about his proposal. I made a video about his proposal to the FCC to add VHF low band frequencies, which I sent him. A, so he emailed me after he saw that video and gave me some details about his background and he sent me a link to the article we're going to read today. And I replied to him and I said, has there been any new news, any movement on this proposal to the FCC? And I'm waiting to hear back on that. Don't have any further updates on that. I certainly hope to get further updates on that soon. And we will make another video about that. But he sent me a link to this article right here. And I went in and had, and this is, this is like a several page article. It's like, all of this in here, and he does links to stuff in there, and this whole thing. Okay, and I will link this in the description below. You guys can go read the whole thing if you want to. But I put this into Grok AI, and, uh, and I had Grok AI summarize this for me. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI can be a useful tool, but it should not be an end-all, be-all answer to everything. So just use it accordingly. And that's what I've done here. Okay, so summarize of this entire article over here on the FCC's website, this PDF file. On April 25th of this year, Michael Trejos, a physician, certified telecommunications engineer, and veteran FCC participant with over 50 years in radio comms, including the oldest active GMRS license. Oh, okay. Submitted a reply comments opposing the proposed deletion of rules 47 CFR, part 95, here, here, and here. These rules prohibit GMRS stations from interconnecting with public switched networks. In other words, connecting over the internet or over telephone lines. Encompassing wireline, RF, internet, and cellular links, except for transmitter control. The proposed items from NPRM promoting deregulation under the executive orders 14.192 and 14.219, aiming to enable wide area linking of GMRS repeater systems. And if you go back to this original article here, and he's talking about in matter of delete, 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 which we did a video about last uh, few months ago as well. Now, admittedly, okay, I fully admit when I first got this link from him, I thought he was talking about petitioning the FCC to allow GMRS repeater linking. He has petitioned the FCC to disallow, which they have done already. They've already disallowed repeater linking. Some people still do it. I don't know how they get away with it, but I mean, you know, FCC's got a lot on their plate, whatever. But I was a little bit surprised with his arguments behind this, and I don't think I agree with him 100%. So let's read on and see what he has to say. Let's see what kind of justification he makes for telling the FCC that they should not allow repeater linking. Key arguments against deletion. So he's arguing against deletion. It's a little bit, uh, this, this legalese is a little bit ambiguous. I'm sorry, you know. Submitted reply comments opposing the proposed deletion of rules of these rules. Okay, so someone has proposed to delete the rules that prevent GMRS repeaters linking, and he is opposing that proposal is what this is, okay? Key arguments against deletion, okay? Trejo cited FCC proceedings starting with docket 20846, which banned GMRS PSTN interconnections beyond control links. Control links where you could connect your GMRS repeater to the internet and then control it somehow over the internet, maybe with an app on your phone or maybe through a web browser, something like that. Beyond control links, due to limited spectrum, only eight repeater channels, and risk of monopol monopolization. This was reaffirmed in PR document, blah, 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 which updated terminology to PSN to explicitly barred voice transmissions via control links. So, in other words, if you want to control it over the internet via data and just 
change frequency, change PL tone, you know, reboot the system, whatever. Okay, fine, but not for voice transmissions. Spectrum scarcity and fair access. Allowing links would enable users to dominate channels, hindering shared use by some 367,000 GMRS licensees, echoing 1970s concerns from events like the 1977 React convention where auto-patch repeaters blocked access. I'm not familiar with that. It was 50 years ago. I don't think it really, you know, I mean, it's, it's a historical significance, but... As far as today, I'm not sure how well that applies. Legal and economic risks. Interconnection would create a pseudo-common carrier service, violating this section, enabling theft of service under 18, this section. This could allow one user to link systems for many others without individual subscriptions. Defrauding carriers like defrauding carriers like Verizon, AT&T, who have historically opposed such practices. Okay, I'm not sure what he's talking about, where AT&T and Verizon would have problems with linked repeaters, but... We do that in ham radio all the time. All star, echo link, link repeaters, no problem. There's no problem there. And I understand what he's saying about limited spectrum because GMRS only has eight separate frequencies for repeater use. They have 16 frequencies for simplex use, which uh, are shared with FRS users, and eight frequencies for repeater use, which all, actually those eight repeater frequencies are shared with the simplex frequencies as well. So I see where he's coming from here. However, however, if you are a repeater owner and you want to link your repeater to another repeater, I think you should be able to do it. And if you want to unlink, if it becomes too big of a system or someone gets on there and starts abusing it, you unlink your repeater. What's the problem? It's going to be on the repeater owner to keep control and maintain control of that. But that's true for every repeater owner everywhere. You should already be doing that. If you're going to spend your money to put a repeater in the air, you should be able to do what you want to with it. I, I realize there's a lot more to it than just that, okay? But as a general rule, I pretty much support repeater linking in GMRS. And I don't really understand why they have... I, I understand his key points here. He's got one other key point that I'm going to get to here in a second. And then I'm going to read you the exact document. But I understand where he's coming from, but to me that means his arguments seem to ride on the fact that repeater owners aren't managing their own repeaters correctly, which if you're going to become a repeater owner, you need to be able to do that. So you need to be willing to do that, I should say. So whether you're a repeater owner, you have a base station set up, or you have some sort of uh, GMRS radio run in your car, today's video sponsor is Mezzi and Ploney Coax. Mezzi and Ploney Coax is some of the best coax made for radio communications in ham radio, but it works wonderfully well on GMRS and UHF stations as well. You can always save a 10% discount on everything by Mezzi and Ploney, their tools, their connectors, their coax, all of their gear, with the coupon code of HR2Cables at the link in the description below. So check that out. Check out Mezzi and Ploney Coax if you want to upgrade the coax on your GMRS station. Thank you, Mezzi and Ploney, for sponsoring this channel. The last point he makes here is Trejos notes that proponents, GMRS clubs and individuals, overtook this 50-year regulatory history, including the FCC's consistent stance on PSN's broad definition, now including... 4G, 5G, and 6G in Internet. Conclusion. Trejos urges the FCC to retain the rules to protect GMRS's limited resources and preventive use, emphasizing that deregulation here would undermine equitable, equitable access and invite enforcement challenges. Enforcement challenges, yes. The repeater owner is going to have to enforce what's happening on his own repeater. If you're going to spend money on the repeater, you should already kind of be in that mindset, in my opinion. He says, from the cellular industry. I still don't understand what he means by, I don't understand what a cell network has to do with repeaters being linked over cell networks. First of all, there's a lot of GMRS repeater sites, I would assume, just like ham radio repeater sites, that don't use cell networks at all. They use like a basic ISP. And some of them might use, some of them that are more remote might use cell sites, but how are we able to use All-Star and Echolink with no problems at all? Nothing again, nothing from the cellular industry at all in ham radio, but not in GMRS radio. He served copies to 28 stakeholders, including GMRS advocates, Verizon attorneys, and industries like the CTIA. Okay. And that is everything that Grok had to say about this article. But I wanted to read you one section of this article here. The conclusion right there. 
Since 1976 to date, the FCC has had a consistent legislative record regarding the pro prohibition of GMRS transmissions over public switching telephone networks. Since uh, 1976 in the docket 20846 and to present date, the commission has made it absolutely clear that the term PSTN, now PSN, was to include wireline and non-wireline radio frequency RF connection, which today has evolved into the internet and 4G. Uh, I would... Okay. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Maybe. The common carrier cellular industry has been vehement throughout their history of preventing theft of service and their use of Title 18 U.S.C. 47, blah, 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 to prosecute theft of service were applicable. Okay, so he's talking about theft of service as in your repeater's linked to another repeater or someone links to you through an all-star type system, and then they take over your repeater and basically take service away from you because they've linked it to their system, and now there's activities going on that are outside of your area. That just simply means the repeater owner should disconnect from that service. There's a way to do that. You can you can do that via internet connection. You can do that via DTMF tones. There's multiple ways to disconnect a repeater from another linked repeater over the internet, and this would require repeater owners to take responsibility for their own repeaters. So this seems like a thin argument to me. I understand what he's saying, and I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying it seems like a thin argument to me. Therefore, I'm quite confident that the common carrier cellular industry will fight to prevent this fight to prevent this theft of service from happening in GMRS with the wide area of both interstate and interstate and intrastate linking of GMRS repeater system and possibly all amateur radio networks that use PSN interconnection versus amateur radio RF linking. So, okay, so now he's going after now he's going after amateur radio sort of in a roundabout passive aggressive way right there. Possibly all amateur radio networks that use a PSN. Well, I can tell you right now, amateur radio repeater owners definitely take control of their amateur radio repeater. Sometimes they piss people off, actually. And it's his repeater. He should be able to say what... But no. No, no. I, I, don't, I don't think that this is a good argument at all. In closing, I firmly believe that the FCC must continue to prohibit the linking of GMRS repeaters and keep in full force the effect of this, 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 as stated by the commission back in 1976, which is still valid today, spectrum availability in GMRS is limited, and as such, permitting interconnection with the PSN for anything other than transmitter control would be extremely detrimental to the ability of all users to have effective and efficient access and use all of the GMRS, eight, the eight GMRS 462 megahertz repeater channels without them being monopolized by those wanting to link repeaters to create wide area interstate communications networks. Exclamation point. Again, I see where he's coming from. I understand what he's saying. I think he's off base. Um, maybe they should create one or two of those eight channels for specifically linking. And then channel 22 or channel 21 or whatever, you know, pick one. This repeater channel is used for linking. All the rest of them are not. Maybe that's an answer to that. Okay, but if you're going to go after amateur radio, amateur radio has been RF linking or RF linking repeaters and internet connecting linking repeaters for a couple of decades now. Okay, this is not something new in amateur radio. And we don't have a limited repeater range the way that GMRS does. GMRS has one band on UHF around 462 megahertz with eight different frequencies that are used for repeater use. AM radio can use repeaters on multiple bands, 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, 220, 1.25 meter, uh, for R440 70 centimeter band, which is just right below the GMRS band, 900 megahertz, 1.2 gigahertz. Okay, we can use, there's multiple frequencies on multiple bands that we can use as repeater linking. So this whole takeover and monopolize thing, sure, it can happen. Sure, but you've got a hundred other places you could go if you have one repeater that's been taken over and monopolized by a rogue system or something like that. Also, if you know the DTMF tones that are standard in All-Star Link and Hamvoip, you can disconnect and connect repeaters at will, even if you don't own the repeater. I can drive up to any All-Star repeater right now and hit star three and the five-digit code for another repeater somewhere else and connect it and then I can hit star one in that code again to disconnect it. So amateur radio control operators, you should ID when you do that, by the way. Amateur radio control operators can don't necessarily have to be the repeater owner. 
So we can we can already do that. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I never messed with actually linking and unlinking repeaters in GMRS. I don't own any GMRS repeaters, so I never really tried that myself. So I'm not sure exactly how that worked, but I, I assume it's probably a similar feature, some sort of DTMF tone that would disconnect and reconnect repeaters. So what do you guys think about this? Are you in favor of the FCC telling us that we cannot link GMRS repeaters? Or do you think that's bogus, and do you think repeater linking should be allowed? I tend to lean on the side of repeater linking should be allowed, and if they want to regulate it to one or two channels, then great. But I don't particularly like someone telling me what I can and can't do with a repeater that I spent money on. That's my stance. Let me know if you have a different stance in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, check out these videos over here where YouTube thinks you want to go next. 73.